I wanted to share something that uh, the other day I went into my office and and uh, it was early in the morning, about three o'clock in the morning, and and really I, I just went in there to have a read. Really, I just wanted to read the word. And uh, as I got there, it just all of a sudden God just started to download uh, stuff into me, and I just took this pad and I just started to write. And uh, and I wanted to just share that with you because I believe that when things like this happen, it's, it's like the heart of the Father. That, that wants to share something really intimate with us, something that will help us uh, find the place where, where God wants us to be. And, you know, right now, we are in the most vulnerable place that we could ever be in. It's obviously God is doing things in our lives. It's obviously God is knocking on our, on our door. It's obviously that God is, is, is not only... The Bible says that, that the, the day that God loves, He chastens. And so he's obviously chasing us. He's obviously dealing with us. How many people know what it's like to be called in the hands of God when he wants to deal with areas of our lives? And so because we are body, soul, and spirit, sometimes we don't like it when God really gets a hold of our lives or starts to answer our prayers, especially when we say, God, have your way in me. And, and then he starts to, and we say, cut it out, you know what I mean? Or we start blaming the devil for getting a hold of our lives. But you see, it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. It's the goodness of God that wants to get around our lives. And, uh, you know, I believe that right now we can be in the most vulnerable position that we're in because it's very obvious that God is starting to do something. How many people can say amen to what I'm saying today? You know, the presence of God, the things that are starting to happen here that we've been praying for, and, uh, and I'm really excited about that. So, in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 4, uh, the Philistines came to do battle with the children of God. They're always coming to do battle. But the unfortunate thing is that Israel was in a bad, very, very bad place spiritually. You know, one of the things there is that when the enemy comes, when we're, when we're down or when we're, you know, when we're not doing well spiritually and he, and he sort of has his way with us, it says in 1 Samuel 2 verse 12, it says, Now the sons of Eli were corrupt, and they did not know the Lord. Now the sons of Eli, they were the prophets, they were the, they were the leadership. Eli was the prophet, and they were his sons, and, but they led, and they were, they were in a place of authority. But the Bible says that they did not know the Lord. Uh, they served false gods, they exploited their position, they uh, committed fornication in the gates of the temple, and Eli did nothing about it. So here they are, the children of Israel, the church, is in a bad position, not really knowing God, not really following God, serving false gods. And so the enemy comes in to attack. The enemy comes in to destroy. It says, it says now the Philistines came to do war against the children of Israel. And Israel was defeated, and the people began to cry out, why didn't God help us? I don't know how many times, friends, I've been in a situation when I know that, you know, I'm not really doing what I should be doing or there's something there that I've allowed to take anger or disappointment or whatever it might be to get into my life and things start going wrong. Anybody else like this? Or am I just Robinson Crusoe on this island? And things start going wrong, and you start saying, God, what, why, why is this happening to me? And uh, what's going on here? You know, the Bible says there that 4,000 men of God died that day when the, when the uh, Philistines came against the children. Straight away, they start to say, well, I know what I've got to do. I've got to get, get God on the scene. Friend, it's not a matter of just getting God on the scene. It's more than that. It's getting right with God. Getting God on the scene doesn't automatically just make things happen. See, God can be in the presence here. God can be with us here. His presence can come down all over us. We can sense the presence of God. And yet, if we do not do what He wants us to do, the enemy will still come in and destroy us. The enemy will still come in and defeat us. Yeah, because friend, it's more than just having the presence of God. And I, I love the presence of God. I want the presence of God more than you can ever imagine or think. 
So what they say is, let's bring the presence of God back. Let's bring the ark of God into the camp. Let's bring the ark of God into the camp. So they send the two sons, the two corrupt sons of Eli, to go and fetch the covenant of the Lord. In verse 5 it says, When the ark came into this camp, all Israel shouted so loudly that the earth shook and the enemy feared. So in other words, here's this bunch of people, and unfortunately what happens, the Bible says that Eli's sons led the people in the ways of corruption. They led the people away from God. Leaders will lead either one way or the other. And these people here that led the people away from God. But here they are, they're being defeated, 4,000 people die. They start to shout out, why is this happening to us? What's going on here? Why, why, why? You can ask why, why, why as much as you like, and I won't really answer the questions. And, and what had happened here is so they say, let's bring the presence of God back. So they send these two sons of Eli to go and get the presence of God. So in comes the ark of God. And so they say, hey, the presence of God is here. And this is what I want to say. We can say, hey, the presence of God is here. But I want to tell you, how many people know God wants more than that? He wants our hearts. He wants us. Amen. He just he, he sure he, he blesses us for two or three gathered together there in mind the midst that he's coming and and, and 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 he wants to pour it out but I want to say he wants more of us. He wants more of us so as that he can hang around and do what he wants to do. So the children of, 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 Israel, of Israel start to shout that there was such a shout in the camp that the whole place, the earth, began to shake. The 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 Hebrew the, the people the uh, Philistines heard the shout and they began to fear. They began to say, what is going on? You know, they've got the presence of God. And, and I think they said something like, this hasn't happened before. I'm going to tell you, friends, we're going to give the devil such a shock, amen, when the presence of God really comes in. How many people know that he wants to come in in a greater measure than what he's at right now? When the presence of God really, really comes in, there's going to come a shout, a holy shout, amen. Not just a shout of our logic or a shout of our emotions. Because you see, uh, you know, what, what was going on here, as the people of God, as they begin to uh, shout, as they begin to cry out like that and clap, but goodness knows what else, it says that the Philistines set themselves against the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out to fight, and some 30,000 of the children of Israel died that day. Now, I, I hope you can catch my drift today, what I'm trying to get at. The ark came into the camp. Uh, they all shouted. But it's not something that's just an emotional thing, friend. It's a heart thing that God wants. It's not just something that we can, we can go, you know, I believe that repentance is the great key to deliverance. Yes. When God wants to deliver us, but it's not just a matter of, of getting His presence into the camp. It's a matter of Him getting with our hearts so that we will allow God to do something special. 1 Samuel 4, 6. Now when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, what does the sound of this great shout mean? And they understood that the ark of the Lord had returned to the camp. And they feared. Then they said in verse 7, Woe to us, such a thing has never happened before. When the presence of God comes back, I believe what it's going to do when it comes back in its fullness is going to bring in His glory. When the glory of God comes into the camp, I will tell you, friends, it's not just going to be a shout, but there will be a shout. I love the shout. Amen. I love the shout. I love to hear it when Joe gets the anointing and starts to shout and the power of God and the anointing comes on his voice. There's something about the shout that's going to come, but I want to tell you there's something great that God wants to do, and He wants to bring in His glory. And the glory of God, when the glory of God comes in, and I love this because everybody that couldn't stand in the presence of God, and I want to tell you, every preacher and every prophet and every evangelist and every ministry gift, whatever it is, is going to bow, and they're going to acknowledge that He is Lord, amen. And that it's not of us, but it's all of Him. And the power of God's going to flood the place and people will be healed and people will be delivered and there will be a great shout that will go out there will be a great crescendo and I will tell you the devil will feel like he's never ever feared before because I believe that this is what is about to happen but it's a time when you and I really need to watch ourselves 
It says, So the Philistines fought, and Israel was defeated. In verse 10, 30,000 foot soldiers died, and the ark of God, the presence of God, was captured. It's an amazing story, this. It's, it, it, it's God here in His presence of God. Is God, can God do whatever He wants to do? Yes, He can. God can do whatever He wants. The presence of God on His own could have defeated every one of those Philistines. But there was something there that He had to withhold. He had to withhold from His people because God wanted to get the hearts of His people. He wanted to get their attention. He wanted to get a hold of them. He said, look, come on. It's not just a hub and puff. It's not just bells and whistles. It's not just this and that. It's a, it's a relationship that I'm looking for. I'm looking for a people there that will love me with all their hearts. I'm looking for a people there that will surrender. I'm looking for a people. Friend, if we're going to see a revival that you want to see, it's going to take more than just coming to church. It's going to take more than just putting an offering in their bag. I would say it's going to take more than just coming to prayer for an hour on a Tuesday night. It's it's going to take somebody that God can get their hearts and He can fill them with the power of God, that He can deal with the weaknesses of their flesh, that there will be such a commitment in their lives that they will know their God and God will know them and there will be such an outpouring of the Spirit of God that we will see a revival like we've never seen before. Here's the children of Israel. They're all there. They all wanted God. But there was something in there that stopped God from moving in their lives. I don't know about you, but uh, we're the clay, but I don't know about you, but I'm sure you've got a few lumps too. Have you got a few lumps in your life that need to be removed? Yeah. Just ask Nancy, she'll tell you a few. <laughs> Just ask the dog, not the dog wouldn't miss. I look after the dog. <laughs> you see, here, here they are, they're doing something. And I guess what I really want to say is there's a way, these people had a way, they thought that this was it. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. There's a way that we might think, well, this is the way you do it. This is the way. No, friends, there's a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end thereof is death. And there's only one way we can do this, and that is God's way. Yahweh. Amen? God's way. And I, I, I believe that God wants to speak to the church and tell the church His way. God is looking for people who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. He is looking for something that's more dynamic than we've ever seen before. God's Word is true. Uh, the prophetic tells us that God wants to do something. Uh, but you must understand, it is usually conditional. It's always conditional. Listen to this. We all know the Scriptures so well. We recite it most probably so many times in 2 Chronicles 4, 7. If, everybody say if. If, if my people who are called by, thy, by, by my name will what? Humble. That is a bad word for the flesh. The flesh does not like that word. I'm right. We'll do it my way. No other way. Amen. No, we won't. We'll do it God's way or no other way. You're on your bike if you don't. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. There's some things there. First of all, we have to humble ourselves. Then we have to pray. Then we have to seek the Lord while he may be found. Then we've got to turn from our wicked ways. We have to turn. Friend, I want to tell you, the Bible says that there's no temptation that God will allow across your path that He doesn't give you the power to overcome it. There's no. So what we have to do is that we have to consciously, even though we don't want to, even though our flesh doesn't want to turn off that television, even though our flesh doesn't want to uh, get up and pray, even though our flesh doesn't want to do that, uh, forgive that person, even though these sort of things might be happening around our lives, we've got to take control, we've got to say, God, I don't care what I feel like, I'm going to do it your way, because unless I do it your way, nothing's going to change. Friend, lust of the flesh, we're looking today at, at stuff that we shouldn't, like the children and school and and pornography and, and sexual permissiveness and goodness knows what else is rampant. 
And people don't know what is right and what is wrong. I hear at, at, at a church where, where, where the first question I ask a young couple that are coming to get married, have you been intimate? That's the first question I ask them. It, that, we, it shouldn't be, you know what I mean, but it is. There's, there's such a, a, a decline in morality. There's such a, a, a slippery slope that people can get on. There's such a, a horrible things that's happening. But friend, we've got to turn from our wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. Only if you do that, then I will hear from heaven. Then I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Do you believe that today? Yes. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, yes. and show you great and mighty things that you do not know. So there's a time, there's a separation, there's a, there's a, a coming away, there's a, a be you separate and come out from among them thing. That God wants His people not to become super religious, super spiritual, super this or super that, but a people that have got a heart for God, that has come to God and say, God, I want you more than anything else. And we start to call unto Him. Call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Amen? What an amazing verse of Scripture. What, a, what, a, what it is. Amazing things. It says, if you're thirsty, come to me. Follow me and I will make you fishes of men. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to me and I will draw near to you. All of these things that we are to do something, to initiate it. You know, one of the great problems I, I think that the church, and especially the children of Israel, they took God for granted. I want to say that again. Do you know that we can take God for granted? You know, we can just say, hey God, take it for granted. I don't care how, what I've done, where I've been, how it is, I've got a problem, come fix it. No. I've got, I've got a problem. You better fix it up. You can't take God for granted. These people just took God for granted. 30,000 people died. 30,000 people died. And the presence of God is captured. I, 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 I love this bit. <laughs> you see, if we can just get God on the scene, that will fix it. No, no, God wants to get into our heart. You know, I, I've noticed that if I could say it like this, that the Spirit of God comes and goes. The top of singing songs about it like a dove. Easy to put to flight. You know, our logic or good ideas will never get the job done unless God Himself is in the center. I pray, I pray, I pray with all sincerity, friends. I cannot be more sincere than I am right now. I pray that God is in the center of this church and not a man. I pray that you don't come to hear us, but you come for God. I pray that God is the center of our worship. God is the center of everything we do here. Can we just lift up our hands and say, God, you be center of this place. God, we want you to be the center of this place. No man, there's no, no nothing, no, no programs. It's not our program, Lord. It's not this or it's not that. It's not a program, it's you, Lord. It's all about you, Lord. It's you. It's all about you, Lord. You are the center. You are the center of our hearts. You are the center. We want to be that Lord. Logic and good ideas will never ever get the job done. Jesus, be our center. Lord, be our everything. Lord, let our hearts be just so, so captivated by you. Let our hearts just be so go out to you, Lord. It's you, Lord. Proverbs verse 
chapter 3, verse 5. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not to your own understanding, but in every way acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not to your own understanding, but in every way acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. And Samuel 4.11 says the ark of God is captured. The sons of Eli die. When Eli heard his sons were dead, he fell backwards off his stool and broke his neck and died. Verse 19, when Hananiah's wife heard that her husband was dead, she gave birth to a son. And she died. And they called the baby by name Ichabod, meaning the glory has departed from Israel, or the glory has departed from the church. And friend, I believe that this is what God wants to do, is He wants to bring back His glory to the church. How many people are hungry for the glory? Come on, hungry for the glory. He wants to bring back the glory to the church. Well, well, we will just, just uh, fall in love with Jesus. Amen? Yes, amen? I just keep falling in love with Him. You know, sometimes the things are hard, it's hard to fall in love with Jesus. You know, we can say, I love you, Jesus, I love you. But you know what I'm talking about? How many people know what I'm talking about? But you know, when the glory comes in and the presence of God just fills us and, and we have those times when the, we can just say, I can see falling. And we go from glory to glory to glory to glory. Amen. It's not just a hit and miss thing. It's not just something that He does one Sunday. But when we go home, we carry the glory. On Monday morning when we get up, we carry the glory to our work or wherever we go. There's a smile on our dial. There's something that's been activated and motivated and, and churning on the inside of us. There's, there's, a, there's a fresh step, God, spring in our step. There's a, a, a new smile. Hey! There's something there that, that, that people can't, can't misunderstand. It. Yeah, and, and you know with every fiber of your being, it's got nothing to do with that you have bacon and eggs for breakfast. It's, got, it's all to do that the presence of God touched your heart. God all around us, amen. There's one problem here. That the enemy had no idea who they were missing. How many people know that the devil's got no idea who he's messing with? <laughs> he has got no idea who he's messing with. He's got no idea. The church in general has no idea who is in our midst and who is in our corner. We've got this, perhaps this um, concept of God, but I'm going to tell you God is much bigger than our concept. Story of, um, uh, it's an amazing story of God in Dagon's camp. Reminds me of when Satan messed with Jesus. On the cross, where it looked like as if he had totally annihilated the plan of God. Here's Jesus hanging on a cross, people spitting at him, they've done everything, people way far off Jesus cries out my God, my God, why have you forsaken me they they put a spear in his side they do all this sort of stuff to him, he dies they take him off the cross put him into a tomb but we know the real Jesus the spirit Jesus went into Hades where Satan thought I've got the man I've stopped the move of God. I've annihilated this whole God's plan. Didn't know who was messing with. But what, what amazes me is that Satan took him into his territory. Where Jesus said, this is where I want to go. This is where I want to be right now. I want to be right here, right now. Because I'm paying the price for all of humanity. And I want every 
devil in hell, I want every demon spirit in hell to know who I am and what power I have over your pipsqueak demon devil that you serve. I, my whole purpose is to make a show of, of him openly. Right here in the very pit of haze, I'm going to make a show of this demon force that you serve. This loser devil. This loser God with a small g. And as Jesus, as we know, on the third day, he began to rise as the Spirit of God came into his life. And as Jesus began to rise from the dead, as every devil in hell started to see him stir, as they saw him stand to his full stature, as they saw him, as he walked over to Satan and slapped him up the side of the head and said, I've been waiting for this very moment. This is what I've been born for. I've been born for this very, very moment. I've come to destroy your works. I've come to pull your power down. I've come back to restore the church. I've come back to give back to the church that which you stole from Adam some thousands of years ago. This is what I've been waiting for. And it would have slapped him up the side of the head. And it would have ripped every piece of power off him. It would have stripped him naked, pulled every tooth from his head. And left him literally powerless. And every devil in hell. And I want to tell you, those devils that are tormenting you, they know the power of the God that you serve and their prayer is that you never find out. Their prayer is that you never find out. Because when the church finds out who is on the inside of us and who's in our corner, amen, I want to tell you, we're going to slap that devil up the side of the head too because we're going to know that no power in hell, there's no power on earth, there's no force anywhere that can ever separate us from the love of God or the anointing of God and God before us who can begin us. Yes. Yes. Uh, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah. I reckon that's worth a bit of a shout, amen. Yeah. I reckon that's worth a bit of a shout. We are overcome. We've overcome the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. David's story is an amazing thing. And now he takes the presence of God into the, in the Dagon's territory. And I want to say, I believe that God was waiting for this opportune time. He just came into that, that place there. And I would imagine as they came in to Dagon's house and they brought the presence of God in there, the people there are saying, hey, Dagon, we've got the presence of God. And the Dagon, because he couldn't talk, would have said, would have said thought in his mind, what do you think you're doing? That's right, that's right. What are you doing? Get him out here. As soon as they shut the door of the tent, and the house, God would have looked up at Dagon and would have said, On your face. Oh, I wonder if he even had to say it. <laughs> he must have never even had to say it, amen. Uh, I reckon Dagon would have been shaken so much, he would have just fallen off the perch. The next day they would come in and here's Dagon on his face before the presence of God. They sent Dagon up again on that perch. And there he is, and the, and the next morning they come in, and everything's broken. His neck's broken, his head's off, his arms are off, and, and everything like that. But do you know what they said? They said that they never, ever worshipped Dagon in that territory again. I want to tell you, there is a deliverance that is not just a hit and miss. The deliverance that God wants to bring us is not putting a band-aid on our problem. He wants to totally deliver us. He wants to totally set us free. He wants to annihilate the works of the devil. Amen. He just doesn't want to be casting the devil out in one week and casting the same thing out in next week and he does another seven of them. He, you know what I mean? He wants to totally deliver us. Amen. Amen. That the devil will not come back and harass you. Yes. I heard a man of God once preaching about, uh, about uh, demons that were going up and down the street harassing people. And this guy got up and he, and, and he obviously chased the thing out. But they, they had, he said that they never come back to his house. When they were coming up his street, they said, don't go in there. <laughs> How many people want that? Yes. Don't go in there. Don't, don't go there. Don't go to that house. Don't, man, that whipped me. Last time I went there, he whipped me. 
Last time he beat me up bad. Amen. Last time he, he hit me with the cross, he hit me with the blood, he hit me with the word, he hit me with man, I just ran. <laughs> I just I, I just had to run, amen. Run. Run for us, run. The see the laws of the of the of the Philistines thought they were so smart. That they, they pinched the, the, the presence of God. They, they stole the presence of God. But once the God had dealt with Dagon, then he started dealing with the people. And all of a sudden, they began to get boils on their bodies. And, and, and tumors, and goodness knows what. And people started to die. And, and, and they didn't know what to do. And eventually they said, hey, get this presence of God out of us. Get it away. So they took the next town. And the next day, all of a sudden, they came down with boils and, and tumors and goodness knows what else, and people began to die. They did not know what to do with the presence of God. They said, send it back. Send it back. Send it back. Rats. The city was struck with a great destruction. Send it back. 1 Samuel 7, 3, it says then, Samuel spoke to all the house of Israel. And this is what we've got to hear. I believe this is what the church must hear. Friend, we've got to hear this. Because it's wonderful to have the presence of God. But unless we really, really, really hear what God's got to say, he has got an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit's going to say, we won't get the victory that God wants to give us. We've got to hear this, the voice of the Lord. Then Samuel spoke to the house of Israel. If you return to the Lord with all your hearts and put away your, those foreign gods, the ash terrains from among you and prepare your hearts for the Lord and serve Him only, He will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines. Let me read it to you again. If you return to the Lord with all your hearts, friend, as a pastor, this is my cry. Can we please return to the heart of God? Not to a church, not to a movement, not to this, not to that, but to God. Can we in our hearts say, God, I want to return to you. I'm not saying, hey, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that, that we don't love God. But I want to just, you know, I feel bad to even suggest this. But how much time has God got in our life? How much, you know, we really, or how much time are we, are we consumed by the world? How much time are we consumed by everything else? How much time, how much neglect have we given God? This is what's happened to these people. They, they took God for granted, so they neglected God. And they, they didn't give Him the time. They didn't give Him the space. They didn't give Him what He required. They didn't. And here they are. They're being defeated. 34,000 people now dead. If you return to the Lord with all your hearts, then put away the foreign gods and, and the ashtray, whatever that is, from among you. And prepare your hearts for the Lord and serve Him only. He will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines. In those ash or whatever they were, they were images of, of Canaanite uh, goddesses. Unclean spirits. So they did what Samuel asked. They did what Samuel prophesied. They started to do it. Friend, I know that a lot of people cannot come to our prayer meeting. I know that a lot of people, because of busyness and, and uh, just sheer distance and, and sheer everything else, but if you can make it, will you make it? Where we can just start to cry out to God, friend, I want to make room that we can do something and prepare our hearts for, for a revival. Amen. Prepare our hearts for God. Prepare our lives if we can if we can just lay down our lives and we can return back to Him and just do it what the Word of God says. It says, So Samuel took a lamb and offered it to the Lord. 
And it says in, in 1 Samuel 7 verse 9, and just read this bit to you. As Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it as a whole burnt, this is the first, yeah, 7 verse 9, to the Lord. Then Samuel cried out to the Lord for Israel, and the Lord answered him. Now as Samuel was offering the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a loud thunder upon the Philistines that day, and so confused them that they were overcome before Israel. See, here we find God in hate, Jesus in hate. He, he, he overthrows a whole demonic force. He overpowers the whole force of the enemy, strips the enemy of all of his, whatever it was. Now we find Jesus, of, of the Spirit of God, in Dagon's camp. Dagon falls through his face. We find now here the, 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 these Philistines coming against the children of God. God starts to worship him. Uh, they start to uh, worship God. They start to honor God. They're, they're making sacrifices, doing what is right in the sight of God. They turn from their wicked ways. And God starts to move by his spirit. Everybody say, move by his spirit. I would imagine it says, while they were sacrificing, the children of Israel hadn't even initially set themselves in battle array. The, the Philistines set themselves up for battle. And as they did, God starts to bring thunderings into the place. God starts to move by His Spirit. God starts to, to do things. And it says in verse 13, it says, So the Philistines were subdued, and they did not come any more into the... Uh, let me read it. I can't read my writing. <laughs> So the Philistines were subdued and they didn't come any more into the territory of Israel. And the, and the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. I don't know about you, friends, but I believe that, that God is wanting to say something, whether it's just to me or to you, but I think it's all of us. To return back to our God. Amen. Amen. To acknowledge Him. To acknowledge His goodness. To acknowledge that He is God. And He's all powerful. He's all consuming. The Philistines set themselves up. Can I say this? That there will be many enemies that will be setting themselves up against us. Against you. Amen. I don't mean negative. But they set themselves up. They'll bring things in your path. They'll bring things through you. You say, I, I want to serve the Lord with all my heart. I want to love God. And I guarantee you that that little thing will float past you. That little thing there that you want to reach out, perhaps a touch. You want to take it. That opportunity to get angry. That opportunity not to forgive. That opportunity to take advantage of something. that Whatever it might be, the friend, that's where we're going to be strong. And I, and I believe that we can't do it in our own strength. I believe that today is a day that, that God is calling His house back to prayer. He's bringing His church back to the Word of God. I, I believe that God can do whatever He wants to do. God can do whatever He wants to do. But why hasn't He done it? And we can say, God, why is this happening? And why is that happening? And until we realize, God... Hear what Samuel said. Return back to God. Put those false gods out of our midst. Put those false things out of our midst. Come and serve the Lord with all your heart. Give Him your heart. Your heart. Offer Him your heart. God, I give you my heart. You know that song? Lord, I give you my heart.
you might be here this, this morning and you're struggling in an area. You might be where the enemies just come at you. That's not to be ashamed of, friend. It's trying to stop the purpose and the plan that God has for your life. To me, that's a good sign. It's a good sign because he's after something that, that God redeems precious. You're here today because God wants to touch that area. He wants to restore it. He wants to rebuild it. He wants to, to do a work in your life. Maybe others here today and, and, and you don't know Jesus, but today you want to give your life to Him. Maybe some have gone away from God and you want to return. That word return, and we said that word, it said something in your heart. Maybe people here today and, and you know, this just you've understood that the pressures of life have got around you and, and just trying to, to live in this world has just consumed you and you know that you, you put God on the back burner you love God with all your heart but if you're going to say God I want to change I, I want to make room for you in my life I do want to make room for you in my life you can't do it you know, friend, otherwise you would have done it long ago you need help once you put to flight 1,000 two should put to flight 10,000 we come and agree with you in prayer that God will touch and help you. But right now, as we sing the song, you've been here today and God spoke to your heart. There's something there that's going on on the inside with you and God. And you just want to come and stand out here in His presence. And that will touch you today. I'm just going to sing the song through a couple more times. Just come. Let him touch your life. Lord, I give you my 